William Henry Meredith, better known as Billy Meredith. He was born on the 30th of July in 1874 in a small town called Chirk just outside Wrexham in Wales. At age 12, Meredith worked as a pit pony driver at Black Park Colliery. His family were strict Christians and Meredith remained a teetotaler for life. Meredith spent eight years working in the mines in a very tough period for mining. There were pay cuts that often led to strike action and this time in his life would shape him as the character he became. Meredith's first love was football and this was aided by his two elder brothers who would take him to games at Everton and other professional clubs. Football was a popular pastime with the miners and Meredith's older brother Sam went on to have a professional career with Stoke City as a fullback. Meredith's first team debut for his local club Chirk was in 1892. At the end of that first season he played in the Welsh Cup final which Chirk lost 2-1 to Wrexham. Meredith's position was an outside forward. We would call that a winger in today's modern game. Times were hard due to the miners' strikes, so to make ends meet, Meredith also joined Northwich Victoria in the English Football League and played for them on a part-time basis. Northwich were a struggling club who ended up withdrawing from the Football League as they only won three games in a season. It just so happened that those three games were the games that Meredith played in. His performances at Northwich gained him some attention from the bigger clubs and Bolton were the first club to make a move. However, their chairman decided that Meredith was too small. Lawrence Furness, an official from Ardwick FC, noticed Meredith when refereeing a Northwich game and in 1894 Ardwick FC, who would later become Manchester City, were pursuing Meredith for his signature. Club officials travelled to Wales to meet Meredith but they were met with hostility and suspicion. They eventually had to buy drinks for all of Meredith's mining friends before they were allowed access to speak to him. The small towns were not happy when the big cities came and stole their boys. Eventually, in 1894, Meredith signed for Manchester City as an amateur and continued to work in the mine for a year. He commuted to Manchester for the games. Meredith's City debut came away at Newcastle in a 5-4 defeat, but he would play his first home game at Hyde Road against Newton Heath, soon to become Manchester United. He scored two goals in his first game, albeit City lost the game 5-2. In Meredith's first full season at City, he ended as top goal scorer for the club. He was appointed captain in his second season, aged just 21 years old. He helped City to promotion from the second division in the 1898-99 season as champions. Meredith scored 30 goals including four hat-tricks. Meredith also scored City's first goal in the first division, but the game ended in a 4-3 defeat to Blackburn. A week later City beat Derby County 4-0 at home and Meredith scored a wonder goal that saw him pick the ball up on the edge of his own box and run the full length of the field before finishing. Meredith was a wing wizard and the Hyde Road faithful loved him. They had a song for him. Oh, I wish I was you, Billy Meredith. I wish I was you. I envy you. Indeed, I do. His trademark was his toothpick. He used to chew it whilst playing on the pitch. Meredith was as popular as some of the biggest music stars of the day. Meredith continued to be a consistent performer for Manchester City. However, controversy was always close by when Meredith was around. In the final game of the 1904-05 season, in which City had a chance to win the title, there was a punch-up on the pitch between City player Sandy Turnbull and Aston Villa captain Alex Leake. The game ended in defeat for City and their title hopes had gone, but the aftermath would leave lasting scars. An accusation was made that Meredith had offered Villa captain Alex Leake the sum of £10 to throw the game, and an FA investigation was launched. Even though no actual evidence was ever produced, the sheer weight of pressure by the media and the negative attention forced Manchester City to ban Meredith for 18 months in which they would not pay him. Meredith was outraged. He felt he had been made a scapegoat. He decided to turn whistleblower in an attempt to show that bribery was commonplace in football. Due to Meredith's claims, the FA launched a further investigation and they hit Manchester City with a large fine of £900. 
This led to chaos within the city ranks and lots of suspensions were to follow. Seeing the chaos over at City, their crosstown rivals Manchester United decided to come in and swoop for Billy Meredith. Many see this as the moment that helped put United on the map. Not only did United sign Billy Meredith, they managed to take three other City stars. Meredith went on to win an FA Cup at United in 1908. However, the mining boy, who had often been on the front line fighting for miners' rights, now wanted to take on the football authorities. Meredith was instrumental in the formation of the players' union. He believed footballers should be paid more and was against any restrictions on their pay. The FA refused to accept the players' union and any players associated to it were outcast and often forced to train by themselves. They even got the nickname Outcast FC. Eventually an agreement was reached, but Meredith referred to his colleagues who had backed down as schoolboys. The players' union would become quite powerful and often threatened strike action which led to Meredith being labelled a troublemaker. His United career ended with him playing 303 games, scoring 35 goals. However, his time there was marred due to the constant public battles against the FA in the media. A couple of years after World War I ended in 1921, Meredith returned to Manchester City after United reluctantly agreed to a free transfer. Meredith was now in his 40s and was a shadow of the former player. Meredith went on to feature in City's last ever game at Hyde Road in 1923 before they moved to their new state-of-the-art stadium, Main Road. Meredith holds the record for being City's oldest ever player, aged 49. Meredith had managed to avoid major injuries during a very physical time in football due to his speed and his agility. This is a comment that he made to the media. I have dedicated myself to football and I have become a better player than most men because I have denied myself much of what they prize. In his personal life, Meredith was married to Ellen Negus and they had two daughters. He wasn't as good in business as he was in football and was made bankrupt in 1909. In 1910, he ran a pub, which was strange with him being a teetotaler. He also went on to run the Stratford Road Hotel. Meredith died in Withington in 1958, aged 83, just two months after the Munich air disaster. Meredith insisted on being buried in an unmarked grave. The house that Meredith died in was actually two streets away from where I grew up myself, hence why I found this particular story very interesting. One tribute to Billy Meredith said, he was a man that knew his own worth. He was a huge celebrity at the time, yet he was buried in an unmarked grave. He was a teetotaler, yet he ran a pub. He fought for players' rights. He fought against the establishment. He was a humble man from a humble background. That was Billy Meredith. He was contradictory until the last. <laughs>